All right, time now for a culture interlude. I'm joined on the set by Ginny Ben Brahim from A Culture Jest. Hello to you, uh, Ginny. Uh, Hello. Paris Fashion Week uh, underway, the last stop in the international fashion calendar. And you're starting with Balmain, where the runway became a rock concert. Tell us more. Well, that's right. It was even dubbed the Balmain Festival. It was a stage jam packed full of people. About a thousand of those people were actually invited guests. I bet about 6,000 were people who were lucky enough to get a ticket to this sort of rock concert. Now, the headline act was the one and only Cher, uh, whose iconic hit, uh, Strong Enough, echoed around the stadium as she strutted down the runway. Let's take a look at some of the images. Well, other musical guests included the Nigerian Afrobeat uh, sensation, CK, uh, who did a little concert at the end of a, the fashion show. And to be honest, well, I kind of feel like the music overshadowed the fashion itself. But if I have to say a few words about the collection, uh, I'd say it was rife with sort of nods to African fashion, um, as well as quite a lot of Renaissance uh, references throughout it. I'm still blown away by how good Cher still looks. It's incredible. Honestly. Right. I want to know her secret. <laughs> Historical references, also at the heart of another uh, Paris collection. Well, for once, actually, Dior decided to look back uh, for this collection this year. Um, and that was via the Italian noblewoman turned uh, French queen Catherine de Medicis. Now, she's quite a controversial figure in French uh, history, but she had quite a sartorial style, uh, so much so that it made waves at court. Um, and you could say she was really the pioneer of what we would call power dressing. Now, the collection includes corsets, crinolines, platform shoes, because she was as am I, a very tiny lady, so it was very <laughs> necessary. Uh, let's hear from a designer herself, Maria Grazia Curie. I think probably Caterina de Venice was one of the first to understand the value of fashion, also for uh, impose uh, her figure in the society. She was called the Black Queen because she decided when uh, husband died to dress herself in black, but it was also a way to identify her rules uh, and their legacy and their and power too. Now this collection, Will, is actually pretty autobiographical for Maria Grazia Curie. She's an Italian who moved to Paris to make it, you know, through fashion and really has had an impact on the fashion industry in Paris. All right, well, from two established fashion houses to a hot young designer here in Paris. Now, Victor Wayne Santo is a bit of a golden boy right now. I mean, he's only 28 years old, and everyone is kind of calling him or touting him as the protege, the heir apparent to Jean-Paul Gaultier. Um, I actually really loved his show last year. It was very, very personal. He talked about or like referenced throughout the show his home of Alsace in eastern France. And another personal touch was when he actually uh, had the voice of his grandmother playing as a soundtrack to the show. So that was quite a sweet moment. Now this year, uh, Wayne Santo actually opened Paris Fashion Week, which is a pretty big honor for someone, you know, so young. Um, and he had a little bit of help from his friends. Uh, he brought some of his peers from the fashion world onto the runway. That includes Charles de Villemorin, who heads up the brand Rochas, as well as the Egon Lab brand founders. Let's actually hear from uh, Victor Wayne Santo. I wanted to make a manifesto of friendship with all my friends. It was very eclectic. That's the point. With photographers, models, performers, dancers, designers. In fact, we all work together. We're all in the same field and it's quite funny to mix our worlds and to make a single show. Now, actually, what I really love about his collections is that they're super lighthearted. He does not take himself seriously, and they're extremely theatrical at times. Yeah, you say theatrical. The next two shows brought camp to the catwalk. Tell us more. Now, I'm going to start with a brand, a Botea, and I'm really sorry for this pun, but they really made a splash, and it will become apparent shortly. <laughs> uh, now, sustainability is really at the heart of what they do, uh, specifically protecting the oceans. Now, speaking of protection, uh, the aquatic-themed collection included a very unusual accessory that we just saw there, condoms filled filled with water, like colored dye water. Is that the preemptive pun? Yes, that was, I really, I really <laughs> built it up there, Will. Now, the brand already uses quite a lot of recycled plastics in their collection, but now they're also including kelp and algae, so much so that the designers who hail from the Caribbean even gave a guest at the show lemonade that was uh, in edible capsules made from algae. Now, the other collection that I really loved was that of uh, Acne Studios. It's their 10th anniversary, and the designers said they wanted to create a sort of Wedding Night Ambiance. Uh, let's take a look at the show. Now,
Now, as you saw in this image as well, there's pink carpets, candelabra, satin sheets. It's very kitsch. Um, and that kind of kitschness also uh, translated into the clothes. We have a romantic mood of lace, tulle details, uh, and some satin touches as well. All right, well, Jenny, tell us how we can enjoy uh, Fashion Week without attending or without being on the set with you. Well, if you want to enjoy fashion from the comfort of your own home, um, I would really recommend getting a hold of a new photo book by Stephen Klein. Now, he really is the most influential uh, and iconic photographer of fashion, film, music, working today. And he's really photographed everyone. And when I say everyone, there's Madonna, Brad Pitt, Naomi Campbell, to name but a few. And he was actually the guest on today's Daily Culture Show Encore, uh, presented by Eve Jackson. Uh, take a listen to him. Time always tells with photographs, so I think that if a photograph withstands time, it can be a great indication of like what's happening culturally and how times have changed. So I think over the 30 years, um, I have many of the same relationships. I've had 20 year and 30 year relationships of working with people, models like Naomi and Kate and with actors as 20 years with Madonna and Brad Pitt. So I think that it's kind of like they're a family and they're also a family of people that I bring back. They're like my actors coming back to work. Now you can actually watch a full show with Stephen Klein at 5.15 Paris time and on our website france24.com. Oh, thank you, Jenny. I hope you understand what I mean when I say this made quite a splash here in the newsroom. You're <laughs> no comment, no comment. <laughs> thank you very much. Jenny Ben-Brahim with a look at some of the latest culture news.